Now Luke chapter 23, verse 28. I did not want to preach this message. My wife will tell you. I, she just said, you just preach what the Lord lays on your heart. I say that every Sunday. I said, why is it? I said, boys, pray for me to have discernment of what God would have me to preach. He kept pointing me this, pointing me this, pointing me this. There you go. So you're getting it, amen? amen? And if it ain't for you, well, you're still getting it, amen? amen. Luke chapter 23, verse 28. Let's stand and read just this one verse, if you will. Luke chapter 23, verse 28. It says, but Jesus... Actually, we'll start in verse 27. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, do thank you for this time that we can be gathered together. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that your message will go forth. And we'll touch those who need to hear it. Be with us. Meet with us this morning. Fill me with your spirit and empty me of myself. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for standing. May be seated. Picture this scene in your mind as often as you do. Uh, uh, maybe not as often, but we should often do this. Jesus has been uh, cruelly scourged. He's been beaten with a cat of nine tails where it would whip into his back and every uh, pullback would unleash the fury of the bone and glass and rock that would dig into his back and would pierce our Savior. And now the Roman governor Pilate sends Jesus away with a group of soldiers uh, down the street toward the place of Golgotha of crucifixion. And seeing that, the soldiers seeing that Jesus is exhausted from being torn and beaten half to death, uh, fearing that he might die on the road before they crucify him, the soldiers pull a man out of the crowd, Simon of Cyrene, and force him to carry the cross of Jesus. And a great crowd of people are following Jesus and ridiculing Jesus. It's made up of those who have said uh, just moments earlier, crucify him, crucify him. We don't want this man to reign over us, give us Barabbas. And a number of others who have now joined them, and in the midst of the crowd is Jesus, and his clothing is soaked with blood from his scourging, blood running down from his face because of the thorns that were upon Amen. his head. Uh, Isaiah 52, 14 would say his visage was so marred that he could not be scarcely recognized. Amen. And now, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus is being led to a shameful death by crucifixion. When we picture Jesus on the cross, we see him in pictures with a robe covering him in his, uh, his secret parts, but I want to let you know that he was absolutely stark naked upon Amen. the cross. Right. Uh, to our generation now, that's no big deal. But to that generation back then, and maybe uh, 30, 50 years ago, that would be a horrific thing Amen. to see. Imagine a little Jewish boy looking up at Jesus and these thieves on the cross naked, uh, hanging there. It's disgusting. It's shameful. And it was all for the world to see. And so in the crowd that follows him are the faces of the priests, the faces of the Pharisees who want to see him dead. Uh, and there too are the brutal Roman soldiers um, who are hardened by so many um, executions that they express no sympathy for him. And there is the howling mob of those who have been bribed by the priests to cry out his crucifixion. Amen. And yet in this savage throng, we find some women. And they press ahead of the others... And they come directly behind Jesus and they begin to cry and to bewail and to lament as if they're attending a funeral of a friend or a relative. And the larger crowd that's around them pays no attention to them wailing and crying because of the voices. But their bitter and wailing of, uh, and their fearful tears and their tearful faces catch somehow the attention of Jesus. Amen. And he stops in the midst of all this, in going to Calvary, in the midst of all this, it, 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 they're, they're, they're sitting there weeping. And Jesus turns around and he says this in verse 28. Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. Amen. Weep for yourselves. That verse divides itself into two points, and that's all I'm going to share with you today. Number one, weep not for for me, Jesus says. Amen. Since Jesus knows our hearts, he knew, and he knows everything in man, he knew that they were really weeping for him. 
It's interesting to me that as Jesus is going to the cross and these women are lamenting and bewailing and just absolutely full of tears crying for him that he stops. And no Roman soldier said, shut up from talking and keep going. Nobody stopped him. This is how you know Jesus was in absolute control till he, even when he was on the cross, Amen. when he gave up his ghost. Amen. And he said, Father, it is finished. Amen. Amen. Jesus was in control all the way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he was in control all the way. <clears throat> so these women wept because, or when they saw Jesus in such agony and pain and misery. And I would be ashamed to call the tears of those women excessive. Uh, that's excessive pity. No, no, it's probably um, right spot on of what they were expressing in their grief. And it, it seems more strange to me that those were the only people that we know of in the text that were weeping. Mm -hmm. Everybody else was just around and, and ridiculing and all these things. And many in that crowd, no doubt, had been healed by the Savior. Others had been fed by Him, possibly. And they all knew He was innocent. Amen. <laughs> and if you saw someone treated the way they treated him, I would hope that you would feel tears coming into your eyes. Amen. This emotion arouses is uh, that arouses uh, feelings of pity and sorrow is called pathos, pathos, or pathos, um, <laughs> sympathy, compassion. It's where we get our word pathetic, right? Our English word. And so that emotion that those women are displaying is that of pity and sorrow and sympathy and compassion Amen. and yet it was only the women that were crying and no one else or those select few <clears throat> they had real sorrow and compassion for jesus and his suffering when they verse 27 bewailed and lamented him and the chief priests felt no pity for jesus and his suffering they didn't care they just wanted him dead and they even mocked him after he was nailed on the cross and said, you believe you call yourself the Son of God, come down from the cross. Amen. Actually, they didn't even talk to him. They said it amongst themselves. That's how much they hated him. They wouldn't even uh, uh, acknowledge his presence. They say, he said he could save himself. Why is he getting down off the cross? Amen. That's pretty, pretty hatred right there. Yes. The Roman soldiers showed no sympathy for Jesus when they beat him on the head and spit in his face because they were hard-hearted. They were, they were hardened soldiers uh, doing these crucifixions all the time, and they were unfeeling and very cruel. But these women wailed and wept for Jesus when he went to the cross. And uh, it, it's a good thing when people feel sorrow for Jesus, is it not? Amen. It's a good thing when you feel sorrow for Jesus in that hour of his suffering and his shame. As Frederick Faber put it, he says, Oh, come and mourn with me a while. Oh, come ye to the Savior's side. Oh, come together, let us mourn. Jesus our Lord is crucified. Have we no tears to shed for him when soldiers scoff and priests deride? Ah, look how patiently he hangs. Jesus our Lord is crucified. And yet Jesus turned to these women and said, Weep not for me. In the midst of all that pain and agony and the humiliation that, he assumed that he's had, he turns and says, Don't weep for me. Who does that? Who says, Don't weep for me? You would want, if you're going through something like that, for people to weep for you. Amen. Because you want to identify, and they're trying to identify, and sympathize, and come up alongside next to you, and understand what you're going through. But no man understood. Amen. Why did he say that? Why did he say, weep not for me? Their weeping was a normal reaction. At least should have been for a lot more people as well. It, it, it was far better than uh. the pitiless cruelty of the mob and the mockery of the soldiers and priests. And it showed some uh, tenderness of their heart. Amen. And even though such tenderness is only a natural emotion, which is very real, there must be a real conviction of sin. There must be a real conviction Amen. of sin. And I remember when I was a boy that tears came into my eyes as a child when I thought of Jesus suffering. Anybody who watches a movie of Jesus suffering is going to cry. Now as an adult, I don't need pictures to show me I have his word. Amen. And that should bring tears into Amen. your eyes. Amen. We don't just read the crucifixion around the time of Easter. We read it all the time. Amen. Why? Because you need your heart soft. Amen. You need to have compassion. You need to have tears. Amen. And, but even though you have tears... 
It wasn't until when I was a little boy that I understood the reality and the hideousness of my sin and what Jesus did for me in real conversion. Amen. What is conversion? What is conversion? Say, what does that mean? Uh, when realizing there is no Savior, the lost sinner goes to the resurrected Christ and the sin bearer, Jesus, and trusts Him alone. Right. That's it. When you see Jesus and Him alone as the sin bearer that took upon Him your sin and you go to Him in faith and receive Him, then Amen. that's conversion. Amen. Then regeneration can happen when the Holy Spirit works in your heart. Right. It isn't wrong to feel sorrow um, for his suffering. It's not wrong. It's completely natural. But sorrow does not produce real conversion. Amen. The, 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 we sing the song, uh, Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Amen. Thou must save and thou alone. It has to be Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, and what, is, what, is, what is this uh, uh, this understanding? It's a very much a deeper understanding, a conviction of sin, and it must be understood and internalized before it's truly, uh, before one can truly be born again. Amen. I can't just say, well, I want to get saved now. No, there has to be some kind of conviction of sin. There has to be some kind of sorrow over sin. And that takes us to the second point where Jesus says, weep for yourselves. Amen. Weep for yourselves. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. Feeling sorrow for Jesus' suffering is not nearly as important of weeping over sins committed. Amen. Which made it necessary for him to suffer and die upon the cross. That's why Jesus says, weep for yourselves. Amen. When Jesus told them, weep for yourselves, he meant that they should weep for their sins that they had committed. He says, don't weep for me. Weep for yourself. There's, pro there's prophecy and a proverb in this thing. We're not going to go on all into all those points. I want to give you a very simple this morning. But he says, weep for yourselves. Why? Weep for your sins that you've committed. Amen. That made it, that made it necessary for him to suffer and, and die and to save them. And the Apostle Paul made it very clear that there are only two kinds of sorrow in the whole world. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Amen. Psalm 38, uh, 18 says, For I will declare my iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. Amen. A broken heart, he had, the psalmist had a broken heart because of his sinfulness. And what Jesus wanted these women to know is, you better weep for yourselves because you're sinners too. Amen. And Psalm 51, 17 says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. And repentance always involves a change of heart. Amen. It always has a change of mind, resulting in a change of attitude, and a resultant change of action. It says, Repentance towards God and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you believe gets you into heaven is not sufficient Save only Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way into heaven. There is no other way. Amen? Amen. These women who wept for Jesus only had the sorrow of the world. They had pathos. Amen. They could sympathize with Jesus and say, oh, look at him, look at them. They had that, but that's the sorrow of the world. That's not going to produce conversion. Amen. And, and that sorrow is a passing emotion. You're not crying daily over the death of Jesus, but when you internalize it and you understand what he's gone through, you're going to have some moments of tears. Mm -hmm. it, it does not lead to conversion. It's only a passing emotion, the sorrow Amen. of the world. A person who only feels sorry uh, for Jesus may take pride in it. And they'll say, oh, I'm feeling sorry for Jesus. I'm closer to becoming a Christian. I'm closer to being, being saved now. But they're far from being a real Christian if Amen. all they feel is pity. Mm -hmm. If all you feel is pity, well, you're not saved. Right. All pity regarding Jesus' suffering is useless when it brings tears to the eyes. Amen. Even if it doesn't bring tears to the eyes. The tears that lead to real conversion are tears of grief of sin. Are tears for the grief of sin or over sin. Not that you need to have tears. You don't have to have tears to be saved. I've met people who have been saved and they were as straight faced as could be and happy as could be in the end. No tears. Amen. But now as a Christian they have a lot of tears. So tears doesn't mean necessarily that you're saved. 
Just because you're super, you're crying and super emotional, that doesn't mean anything. That's not what saves. Jesus Christ upon the cool rugged cross is what saves. A true understanding of sin can only come by seeing how far from the holiness of God and His law is. Which is what? The law says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Have you done that? Can you honestly say to yourself that you have loved God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might? In in all honesty, in in fact, you hardly think about God. Think about that. You hardly think about God. And when you do think of Him, you have no real love for Him. I'm not speaking to my saved folks. I'm I'm talking to those who may be unsaved. God is hardly ever in your thoughts when you're not in church. Have you not continuously broken the greatest commandment to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind? It's true that you've sinned against God in your heart throughout your life. It's never stopped. And since that is true, we need to admit to God with grief over sin. There needs to be grief over sin. There has to be grief over sin. If we can weep over a dead animal, if we can weep over a little tiny chihuahua who gets skinned alive and burnt on fire, but you can't weep for Jesus Christ, that's wrong. Amen. If we can weep for an animal or a cat or something getting beat, but you can't weep for Jesus Christ, then that's wrong. If you can weep over an animal, but you can't weep over sin, you need to check yourself. Amen. If you can weep and say, oh, this is wrong and that is wrong in my country, no, 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 how about you weep over your sin? Amen. Weep over sin. You don't have true grief if you're not weeping over sin. Jesus says, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. The Apostle James says, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Christianity does not begin with a broken heart. Christianity doesn't begin with a broken heart. It begins with a consciousness of sin. It doesn't begin with a broken heart. It begins with a consciousness of sin. Jesus says, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. Amen. Why? Because he went to the cross on purpose to pay the penalty of your sin. Amen. Absolutely he did. And he went to the cross with joy. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame. Amen? Amen. Endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Why could he do it with joy? He wasn't happy going on the cross. He wasn't happy on the cross. But he had joy in knowing that beyond the cross, it would be millions of untold, thousands of millions of people who would trust in him and would receive his glorious person. And so Jesus says, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. If the holy, pure, innocent one can experience such treatment, if he can experience such treatment and scourging on the cross that he didn't deserve, he didn't deserve it, but he did it, he chose it for you. If he can do that, what will sinners meet who fully deserve the fires of judgment? What will their end be? What will their end be? Do not pity Christ, pity yourself. Weep for yourself because your sins will bring judgment upon you. Weep for yourself because you've lived in sin and will endure endless punishment for it. Just like people are blind right now. People are blind to everything that's going on. People are blind to the state of things. And just like they're blind to the state of things, people are blind to the true state of that suffering. Even born-again believers will say there's no suffering. On the contrary, Jesus describes it in these words. There should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you don't weep now, there's going to be weeping then. If Jesus would say there's eternal damnation, he would call it a furnace of fire. He would call it everlasting fire, and he would describe it as outer darkness. Weep weep for yourself because you've thought so lightly about salvation of your soul. Weep for yourself because you've thought so little about Christ's sacrifice for your sins. Weep for yourself because you've continued to reject Jesus' offering of forgiveness through the blood of his cross. The sinner looks at what Jesus has done and he says, no thanks. No thanks. Weep for yourself because you trodden underfoot the Son of God. Weep for yourself because you have counted the blood of the covenant an unholy thing and have done despite of the spirit of grace. what, What is someone who rejects Jesus Christ? They treat his sacrifice as worthless. 
You treat God's Son as worthless for the salvation of sinners. Amen. Say, I don't need that garbage. Weep for yourself as Charles Wesley did. He says this. Depth of mercy? Can there be mercy still reserved for me? Can my God his wrath forbear me, the chief of sinners, spare? Depth of mercy? Can there be mercy still reserved for me? I have long withstood his grace, long provoked him to his face, would not hearken to his call, grieved him by a thousand falls. Depth of mercy, can there be mercy still reserved for me? Amen. Jesus says, weep not for me, weep for yourselves. For if you don't weep of your sins now, there will be no opportunity to do so after Amen. death. If you do not trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as the free gift of salvation, you will be eternally damned. Amen. Jesus died to provide deliverance from that judgment. Amen. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. He showed us and he proved his love in sending Jesus upon the cross. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting Praise life. Lord. For Amen. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Amen. It'll be an awful scene. And if, 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 if those who, if the one who offered this forgiveness is rejected, there can be no hope. Amen. There is only hope found in Jesus Christ. Amen. It'll be an awful scene for some of them carrying their own sins downward into hellfire. I don't want that to happen to anybody. Amen. But it's going to happen. It has happened. Sin is the cross on which your soul is fastened. And sinful thoughts and actions are the nails that hold you there. And your soul is carrying your sins and is loving to carry them. Amen. That's the that's the attitude of Christians. They're going, or sorry, the attitude of sinners without Christ. They're going to eternal damnation. Eternal damnation. Think about that. Eternal damnation. Amen. In the flames of hell, forever in torment, and they're laughing every step of the way. Every step you take brings you closer to the flames. Amen. And yet until now, you felt no fear. So I haven't felt any fear until just now. No sorrow for sin, no contrition, no weeping. And that, if that describes you, I plead with you in the words of Christ, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. Amen. Weep for yourselves. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. For my Christians this morning, I believe everybody in this room is, as we embrace the call of God in our lives, what is the call of God in our lives? To go and teach others about Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ. As we embrace that call of God and go out and teach more nations, uh, and, you know, are, are we more concerned about suffering or the potential suffering in this present world than we are of the wrath of God that is soon to come upon the world? Are you more concerned about your suffering or the potential to suffer than we're concerned about God's wrath coming upon the world to come? It's, it's, not, it's not Christians who are to be wept over. It's the fate of those who die without Amen. Jesus. That's who needs to be wept over. And I believe that we are Christians are more concerned with our own treatment than we are uh, of souls perishing. I, 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 I really believe that many Christians today are more concerned with our treatment than, we're, than we are of souls perishing for eternity Amen. to go to hell. I really believe that. Because if we didn't care about us and we did care about them, then we would go out there and tell them. Amen. Yes. That's right. Philippians 1.21 says, For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Christ is the one who is supposed to live, not me. Amen. My, my, my goals, my ambitions, my, my everything that I want is thrown in the trash. And I say, God, what do you want me to do? Amen. God says, I want you to go make disciples. Yes, sir. Amen. And be concerned about the lost. We should weep for the lost. You should be weeping for the lost. Amen. I hope you have a prayer list and you weep for the lost. Amen. You have people on that list. We have people that have, we pray every Wednesday for salvation. Amen. I hope you take that home, internalize that, and pray for them. Amen. We, we, we spend and will be spent on behalf of their souls. Gladly are we making that plain. Are we living with that mindset that I want to make Christ known? I want Christ to live in me. My, my attitude and all my things that I want and everything in this life that I want to accumulate is just nothing. 
Amen. but I want to live for Christ. Amen. If we're making that plain, we'll see Levine changed. Amen? Amen. We'll see people getting saved. Are we living with that mindset? God, help us to be yes. reaching yes. those who are lost. Yes. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this time. I thank you for the word.